And what are his people doing? They're making death threats against the members of the judiciary or anybody else who is trying to uphold the rule of law. So um, Judge Tanya Chutkin, you know that name. She's overseeing um, She's overseeing the, uh, which trial is it? <laughs> One of the trials. Uh, there's so many of them. I'm going to get a chart printed up and put it in, in the back uh, of the studio because uh, it, it, it helps me keep them straight. But anyway, so what happened last night? Judge Chutkin was the victim of a swatting. Now, we know what a SWAT, a legitimate SWAT is. It's when uh, the SWAT team comes and surrounds your house and go, go in and with guns drawn and because they are told that there is an armed and dangerous person on the premises. There's got to be a way for them to uh, tell which ones are real and which ones are fake. Our buddy Spocko is on the line. Hey, Spocko. Hello. Hello. Hi, uh- just got back from the library. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> we we corrected him, and Proudscale will not be saying library again. That's where I get my strawberries. <laughs> my mom used to say that. Aww. It's a, it's a expected, regional thing. I know. I expect it from little kids, but, you know, anyway. <laughs> and I was a little kid when I learned it. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I uh, I was working on uh doing a piece on swatting yes when when the secretary of state of maine was swatted uh your your Sha- friend shanna bellows yes and i did a bunch of research at the time asking a lot of the questions about you know what is it but my question of course was why can't they do anything to stop this? Yes. How do they not know? How can they not tell if something's legit or not? Well, there's interesting. This this kind of started in, in the tech community. And the people who did it in the gaming community, they were fairly sophisticated. And they knew how to avoid getting people uh, getting traced. Like they used uh, burner phones. Oh. They covered up their IP addresses. That's one part of it. But the other part is it is not a federal crime to do this, even really? though people have been injured and killed in this case. So a few of the states had uh, tried to do something. But one of the other things is I think that the federal people, they don't want these crimes to be punished severely because they like being able to keep threatening people, the Republicans. Yep. yep. So there have been four different attempts to try and pass a bill at the federal end and starting in 2014 and nothing happened. So uh, finally, in uh, just last year, the FBI put together a database on a national database on swatting in terms of trying to keep track of this nationally and give the resources to order to follow up. And, you know, this is the other thing is talk about resources one of the things that I found out in this research is each swatting attempt can cost anywhere from ten thousand dollars to a hundred thousand dollars. I believe that. Yeah. If they bring like you know a helicopter, this was in New York, right? And one of the other things that I learned was this is this kind of blows my mind. It is now something called swatting as a service has been developed, and uh, for our software friends, S A A S, swatting as a service. <laughs> For $75, a high school kid can have his high school swatted. Uh, oh, so, so, so that a, a, an exam is delayed, exactly. for example. It's like, yes. you know, like bomb threats. And I was looking at just like, it's like, so why does this not, you know, why isn't it more serious? And somebody in the chat talked about, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a prankster thing. And I think even that language and yeah. how it's positioned as a prank is one of the reasons why it doesn't get taken as seriously. And because the people who do it might also be juveniles. So you've got that happening. People say, oh, it's a prank and nobody's hurt, but people have been, you know, killed by this. And I wanted to know, like, so what happens if it is, you know, arrest when they actually do it, it doesn't get taken as serious because Unless there's a you know a federal law, a lot of states' laws they're just misdemeanors. Wow. 
And well, so because up until up so, until a few years ago, there, there wasn't a thing. There, like you know, there. It, I guess someone could have done it, but it wasn't a trend. It wasn't a thing, and now it's a thing. Well, it is a trend in certain, like in the gaming community. And again, mm. if you've got high school kids who can figure this stuff out, you've got some brain dead right wingers who are going to be able to say, "Well, I can do this." Now you go online. There's instructions on how to do this. So. One of the things that we're thinking, well, what can be done? And so there's a couple of things. One is, you know, you talk about the, you know, the law and changing it into state laws and federal laws. Well, you know, a lot of the times when this happens, it mostly comes the the other ones are from the right wing. Uh-huh. But recently, our friend Empty uh, uh, Green uh, and uh, your not to be former con- senator, not to be confused with Empty Wheel, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, your Former Senator uh, Rick Squat, both of them, yes. Rick Scott. Squat. I liked Squat better, but okay. <laughs> both of them were Squat. Yes, they were. And so now it's kind of like the press can cover it as you know, both sides do it. Yeah. And you'll you'll be seeing some coverage today about Judge Chutkin's, uh, you know, swatting and yeah. not cover what it is, etc. And you yeah. know, she was safe. But what I followed up on, uh, and I, you know, I, I was talking uh, with Glenn Kirshner about this uh, yesterday, because one of the reasons that Judge Shutkin and then also the Secretary of State of Maine were swatted is because Donald Trump calls them out. Yeah. And I, I went down the whole path of like, well, swatting and how do you find them? Blah, blah, blah. It, but he kind of brought it up to the next level, which is there is a person who is under a felony indictment and he has pretrial conditions. And this is a way that they should be looking at protecting the community. And we can protect the community by making the law act as it is intended. And he should revoke his pretrial conditions Mm -hmm. and put him in jail pending his trial. Now, the thing that I thought was really interesting, he said was, we don't, I mean, it has a side benefit of shutting him up. And he says, we don't, you know, put them in jail. We do it to protect the community. Shutting him up is like a side benefit, but that is one of the few ways to stop him. And I, and I brought up, well, yeah, but all of his other buddies will, you know, go on as well. He said, yeah, but the thing about Trump is he is the person that people notice yep. and they listen to. And when he gets away with it, people think, well, I can get away with it, too. So that would be a thing that I would you know, like to see is tying the use of threats and going after the one of the biggest proponents yeah. of it. Well, that would be a good thing. But, you know, Donald Trump seems to get away with everything. There's a reason he's called Teflon Don, because it somehow he just slides. And I think I think a big part of it, Spocko, is that he is um, uh, he he throws the, the old expression, throws so much shit against the wall to see what sticks. And there's just too much of it for any any one or any one entity to keep up with. And so most of much of it gets ignored. Um, yeah. You know, I, I don't know what the I, I don't know any other way to put it. By the way, I got to show you one thing. So Marjorie, you met, you brought up Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, she had a book signing, I guess, today or yesterday in I think it was Daytona Beach, Florida. Mm-hmm. And um, putting up a picture of the huge crowds. There was one person there. She's got a stack of books on the table, and there was one. <laughs> now, now, there was this one, one person one where there. The Kissimmee, Florida thing that the people said you cannot attend. Oh, they like canceled oh, it because right. I don't know. I don't. You know, I that, I that try not happened. to pay it, too much expense uh, ex- attention to Florida these days. Um, but I saw that, and I just had to share it because it was too classic. She was going to go on about the January 6th and kind right. of a celebration of yep. it. And the organizers said, that's not what we wanted to sign up for. You said it was going to be a book signing. So they canceled it. So she went to this other location and she had her little you know, book thing. And she then pointed out later, uh, you know, those commies are trying to shut me up. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the interesting thing, there's another event that she had. And I, I was trying to, you know, find out whether or not it happened 
where she had Derek Evans, who was that congressperson who had uh, got indicted and spent jail for being an insurrectionist. (laughs) He was going to be there, too, talking. And uh, so we contacted the people at uh, Eventbrite and said, hey, did you know that your event is being used to, you know, promote, you know, potential violence and this guy is is a convicted felon and et cetera? You know, I don't know if anything happened, but it occurred to me is this guy's out on parole. Uh-huh. And I wonder if there is a violation of his parole hanging out with other yes. uh, felons. felons. Wait, wait, yeah. she's not a felon yet. Well, um, yet. <laughs> yet. But really, it's just it's just semantics because <laughs> she is. I, she's an insurrectionist, right? So, yeah. 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 I, anyway, I would that, think if he's doing something like that, it would be against his parole. But, you know, who knows? I'm going to call his parole officer and yeah, find baby. out. Yeah, baby. You do that. All right, Spocko. And by the way, just so everybody knows, uh, in case they don't regularly read Digby's blog, digbysblog.net, Spocko is a regular contributor there. And Digby's going to be here tomorrow. Woohoo! We have to do our usual.